إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب جميع المكلفين يتعلم دينه ما يتفقه في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لأنك مخلوق لعباد الله ولا طريق إلى معرفة هذه العبادة ولا سبيل إليها إلا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah We praise him, we worship him, we seek his assistance and we seek his tawfiq and we pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us. And we pray to him to give us the tawfiq to apply it. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما. Tonight is the night of the 17th of Rajab of the year 1440, since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which translates into March the 23rd of the Gregorian calendar 2019. I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make this night a blessed night, and all the brothers and sisters who are physically with us in this masjid, or who might be tuning in live, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make them mubarakin, blessed in themselves and in their families. Allahumma ameen. And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this majlis, a majlis mubarak, the 88th majlis of this commentary on al aqeed al tahawiyya This is a majlis dhikr of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, where we study and remember what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us and legislated for us and told us to believe in. And this is a majlis that is witnessed by the angels, showered by the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make our ja'izah. When we are done here, is that it will be said to us, go for you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. And brothers and sisters, I know, you know, sometimes over time, this is the 88th majlis, subhanAllah. It's pretty substantial amount of time. I know sometimes, you know, our, we call it in the Arabic language, al-himmah. I don't know the exact translation of this into English. Um, I think this, you know, energy that you feel yourself, you know, coming forward, right? And sitting in these majalis al-ilm, al-himma. Sometimes we call, you know, those who actually achieved so much, we, we, we call them, they used to have a himma aliyah, high esteem. They, they had a high energy. And this is not but a tawfiq from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So this is why, and these, these majalis al-ilm, acquiring the knowledge, ya ibadallah, is one of the greatest khair 
And we keep on repeating the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani whoever Allah Azza wa Jal wants khair for, he will make him comprehend the religion. Do you imagine what kind of khair that is? Yani if Allah Azza wa Jal wants khair for a person, he will make him or her comprehend the religion. So you can imagine how much comprehend, uh, comprehending and understanding the religion, what kind of khair it is, right? So this is why we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to keep giving us the tawfiq to sit around these majalis al-ilm. Um, inshallah, if you have any questions, especially I would like to remind the sisters up, upstairs and also those who are tuning in live, if you have questions, please also engage with us. You have absolutely the right to ask questions like everybody else. Um, one side note, I apologize, there's no tea to, tonight. So forgive us, inshallah. Um, we started the, talking about the statement one, number 163. 163, or statement 163rd, where قال المصنف, he said, وَنَتَّبِعُ السُنَّةَ وَالْجَمَاعَةَ وَنَجْتَنِبُ الشُّذُوذَ وَالْخِلَافَ وَالْفُرْقَةَ And we follow the sunnah and the jama'ah, and we avoid separation and disputation and splitting. We already started commenting on this, sta on this statement, and we said this is actually one of the most important statements in this entire text, because this is a great principle, if not the most important, one of the most important principles of Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah As a matter of fact, you can tell, right? From their name, it became like a, like for the lack of a better word, right? Yani, for example, um, each one of us has a name, right? Recognized by that name. So, for example, Brother Zahir, right? When, when I say half of Zahir, he is recognized. He, you know, this is his proper name. Brother Yusuf, everybody knows that when I say Yusuf, it means, you know, I'm referring to him. The proper name of those who follow Rasulullah closely is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So you can imagine what kind of two foundations, important foundation that they came to be known by them, right? This group of people came to be known by them, by these two principles, these two foundations, Sunnah and al Jama'ah. And in this statement, he is saying, وَنَتَّبِعُ السُنَّةَ وَالْجَمَاعَةَ Because these are the foundation of this deen and foundation of al-ittiba' which is what we are what we are ordered to do and we did say that as a matter of fact these statements that we've commented on so far and the remaining statements that ta'ala we're going to comment on all of this commentary and all of this explanation right these statements needed explanation right the understanding that we stated in these majalis is nothing but following the sunnah and the, and the jama'ah, jama'at al-muslimin. That's why you see this is an important statement. All of the commentary that we've made so far is actually relying, the, fa the foundation of it is ittiba' al-sunnah wal-jama'ah. Otherwise, a lot of those statements, most of them, even maybe all of them, right? In under each one of them, we did mention that some groups did come up with another understanding. And these groups understood it in this way, and that group understood it in that way. And Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, this is their understanding, correct? Right? This is what we said. So you can, why is it that this is the correct understanding? Because it is following Sunnah and al Jama'ah. Right? And those deviated from that following of Sunnah and Al-Jama'ah. Now obviously, don't worry about it, just be patient with me, we're gonna explain what a Sunnah is and what Al-Jama'ah al is. So Al-Ittiba' is to follow a Sunnah and Al-Jama'ah, also to actually avoid separation and disputation and splitting, and also we're gonna explain all of these terms. So it is not just following, but also knowing what is the opposite of it, or what contradicts it, and avoiding it. Yani it is not only important, it is important, but it is not enough to know what a tawheed is, but also what a shirk is, to avoid it. And it is not enough to know what a sunnah is, but also to know what al-bid'ah is, to avoid it. 
You see what the, the, so to know, to fully knowing, to, to fully comprehend something, you also have to grasp the opposite of it or know what it is not. What it is and what it's not. Then you fully grasp it. And this is why he's in this one statement, he's mentioning what, he's, what we follow and what we avoid so that we can actually kind of tie it together and tie it 100%. This ittiba' sunnah wal jama'ah is in reality following, following in the footsteps of the first jama'ah, which is jama'at al-sahaba, those who learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave behind a dirham nor a dinar. Is that what he left behind? He didn't leave behind that. None of the messengers and none of the prophets, they left behind dirham or dinar, meaning money or property. What they left is way more important than that. They left behind the ilm, knowledge, and the practice. And this is what the Sahaba, radwanullahi alayhim, they inherited from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They inherited the ilm and the amal and guidance, right? He guided them and he taught them and he practiced. He set the example in front of them and they learned directly. They learned directly from him, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then they actually handed over to the next generation and so on and so forth. This is, to be frank with you, how it actually reached us, right? This is how it ended up in our hands. And we owe them so much after Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So, and the Sahaba, they actually had a consensus, ajma'u, ajma'u and ijtama'u on this understanding of al-aqeedah and the matters of al-aqeedah and al-tawheed and the unseen. There is absolutely no difference and no or difference of opinions. It doesn't exist in the matters of aqeedah. There was an absolute consensus among them. And for the vast majority of what we call today al-fiqh, the matters of al-fiqh, al-ibadat, al-mu'amalat, uh, uh, contracts, etc., etc., al Hajj, al Umrah, etc., etc., they agreed on the most of it, on the most uh, matters of them, and they have uh, differences of opinion in only a small portion of them. But for the, most, uh, for the vast majority of it, they actually agreed on, on their understanding. This way of al Jama'a al Ula, the first Jama'a, became the Sabil al Mu'mineen. In which Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the ayah in the Quran. We're going to come to that. This way of jama'at, jama'at al-ula, the first jama'a, became sabil al mu'minin the way of the believers that we are actually supposed to follow and to follow in their footsteps. This became as a proper now, name and proper identification of those who follow this sabil al mu'minin and the way of al mu'minin they became ahl sunnah wal jama'a and they actually uh, avoid following the desires and the people of desires they follow what they have inherited from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and with the understanding of this first jama'a so this is actually a great like i said a great example a great principle and a great foundation of this deen that has been passed on to us. And we also said the occasion of this statement, the occasion of this statement is that he mentioned it right after talking about not rebelling against the Muslim leader. And before that, also he talked about the impermissibility of shedding the blood of the Muslim. Remember? Wala nara safe. And we do not see uh, using the sword against any of the ummah or, or, or any of the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because these actually give you the impression of al-ishtima' yani the unity and being as one body or one or as one person and one soul. So this is the occasion of this, that this is our understanding, the understanding of this first jama'ah of the sahaba and uh, those who follow them, uh, they have been called Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah because they follow these two, these two principles, Sunnah and Al Jama'ah. And we also said that this is actually in reality based on so many evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which indicates either explicitly or implicitly, either explicitly 
or implicitly the order to unite and follow and to avoid uh, differences and splitting and diversion from the, from the evidences that were passed to us. And we gave a lot of ayat, a lot of ahadith, very quickly, inshallah. Uh, what we mentioned is the ayah of Surah Ali Imran, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold fast, all of you together, to the rope of Allah, which is this Qur'an and the sunnah that supports it. And be not divided among yourselves. So this couldn't be more clear, right? It is so explicit. Hold fast, اجتمعوا, اجتماع, and do not split. ولا تتفرقوا, ولا تتفرقوا. Uh, and then the ayah of Surah Al-Shura, أن أقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه. The, saying you should establish religion and make no division in it. Again, it is so explicit in the warning against div dividing and splitting in the religion. And also from it is what Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah An-Nisa: "وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ." This is what we were referring to. What is Sabil al-Mu'minin? What is Sabil al-Mu'minin? It is Sabil al-Jama'a al-Ula. It is the way of the first Jama'a. This is Sabil al-Mu'minin. And, who, and whoever contradicts and opposes the messenger after the right path has been shown clearly to him and follows other than the believer's way, we shall keep him in the path that he has chosen and burn him, burn him in hell. We seek refuge in Allah. What an evil destination. And from it is what Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِمَا حُمِّلْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِّلْتُمْ Say obey Allah and obey the messenger, but if you turn away, he alayhi salatu was salam is only responsible for the duty placed on him. What is the duty placed on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? البلاغ تبليغ يعني to convey the message. This is what the responsibility that was placed upon the Rasulullah Sallallahu So for him, he is only responsible for conveying. And what is the responsibility placed on us? وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِّلْتُمْ What is it that we were humilna to follow? And نَتَّبِعَ الْإِتِّبَاعَ So what we're supposed, the responsibility upon us is الْإِتِّبَاعَ and the responsibility upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma hummil Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is al-balaag, al-balaag al-mubin. And also from it is what Allah azza wa jal says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Ha, ittiba' And he says, وَنَتَّبِعِ السُنَّةَ وَالْجَمَاعَةَ You see, وَنَتَّبِعِ وَنَتَّبِعِ قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي ittiba' يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say, meaning Ya Muhammad to mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you love Allah, then follow me. So this is what we are ordered to do, الاتباع. From the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, obviously this is just to give an example, otherwise the evidences from the Qur'an are too numerous. From the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith that is known, and we mentioned this, this is the hadith that we mentioned last time, which is known among the people of knowledge as hadith al-iftiraq. Hadith al-iftiraq. Yani the ummah sataftariq. That the ummah will split. The hadith of splitting of the ummah. Which is related, or narrated rather, which is narrated by Amir al-Mu'mineen Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu anhu wa ardah. And this is actually narrated or related by Imam Abi Dawood and al-Hakim and the Imam Ibn Hajar, he judged it as a hadith hasan. And the Imam Al-Hakim, he actually judged it as a hadith sahih. In it, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he stood among us and said, beware the people of the book before you split up into 72 sects. And this ummah will be split into 73, meaning sects. 70 of, 72 of them will go to hell. We, see, we seek refuge in Allah. And only one will go to paradise. So the Sahaba, obviously, they want to be saved, right? So they said, Ya Rasulullah, which one is it? Which one is that one sect that will be saved, that will go to paradise? Because obviously they want to be from it. So he said, Hiya al-jama'a. Hiya al-jama'a. Another narration of the same hadith, it differs in the, in the answer. It has a different wording for the answer. In this riwayah, this other version of it, also it, uh, it's actually related by Imam al-Tirmidhi uh, and others. 
and the Imam al-Albani, he judged it as sahih, as a hadith, sahih. In that uh, uh, version, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and my ummah will split into 73 sects. All of them are in the fire except one. So he was asked, which one is it? So he said, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي which is which, uh, uh, that with what I am upon and my companions. This version clarifies the other version. Because if you remember, in the first version, he said, he al jamaa What is exactly jamaa right? Because you can be sure that a lot of people will come and, and explain it in a different way. One group of people will say, oh, this al jamaa this is us. The other group will say, this is us. Everybody will say it is us. So we want to know exactly what Rasulullah meant. In the other version, it, it clarifies the first one. He al jamaa What is al jamaa what is I am upon and my companions? He ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. So it became clear, crystal clear. So it becomes al jamaa is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, which is the first jamaa, were upon. So if we follow that, which is sabil al mu'minin, then we know that we are on the true path that we are supposed to actually follow. And from it is the many ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who told us about a lot of sects that will deviate, right? And that will split from this way of sabil al-mu'mineen about al-khawarij, kharaju, right? They kharaju upon the ummah. They actually rebelled against the ummah and they split from the ummah and they actually deferred from the sahaba. They actually uh, uh, split from the sahaba. And Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he actually ordered to kill them. And this is what Ali ibn Abi Talib did. They actually killed them, obviously after explaining to them and establishing the argument. Al-Hujjah alayhim. Once the Hujjah was established, if they don't and they keep fighting, obviously they need to be fought back. And this is what Ali ibn Abi Talib did. He fought them and conquered them and defeated them. Radiallahu anhu arda. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in describing these people, he said, Yamruquna min ad deen kama yamruqu sahmu min al ramiyya. During the last days, there will appear some young, foolish people. And we're seeing some of their remnants today. Wallahi, this is exactly what we're seeing today. In some parts, exactly the same, the same uh, description. Their remnants, they may not call them, themselves obviously khawarij, they're not going to do that, right? But they are definitely, you can say, they are their remnants and they are their offsprings. They sa he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, during the last days, they will appear some young, foolish people who will say the best words. If you listen to them, you will be amazed by their word, by their word and their way of, speak, of speech, right? The way they speak will actually uh, amaze you. They will say the best words, but their faith will not go beyond their throats. That's it. And in another narration, if you listen to their Quran recitation, it doesn't go beyond their throat. It doesn't reach beyond, that, beyond this. Yani, otherwise, their faith is invalid and will go out from their religion as the arrow goes through, through the prey. If, if any one of you ever hunted in the, or seen how they hunt, right? When you actually, when the hunter, right, uses the arrow, right? Sometimes the arrow will go through the prey and leave from the other side. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa subhanAllah, look at this description. Ajib. Look at the description. He's describing that, that this is how the faith will go through them and exit them. Meaning that they have no faith. They have no, no uh, valid faith. يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمِ The arrow from, from a ramiya, which is the prey. أَيْنَمَا لَقِيتُمُوهُمْ فَاقْتُلُوهُمْ فَإِنَّ فِي قَتْلِهِمْ أَجْرًا أَجْرًا لِمَنْ قَتَلَهُمْ So whoever you find them, kill them, for whoever kills them shall have reward on the day of resurrection. This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. And the Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrated this hadith under the chapter that is istitaba, to actually nastatib, yani to actually encourage them to come back, to encourage them to make tawbah, to come back to the faith. Istidabat al murtaddin and al muanidin wa qitalihim to ask those who are uh, apostates and to, to repent and 
uh, the permissibility of fighting them if they don't. And then under that, the chapter, Bab Qatl al Khawariji wal Mulhidin Ba'da Iqamati al Hujjati alayhim. The chapter, or the, you know, the sub, sub chapter, which is of killing the Khawarij and the atheist after establishing the proof on them. If they insist, then they can be uh, fought and killed. Also from, again, we're talking about the evidences to the order to stick to the sunnah and the jama'ah. From it also, from the hadith of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is in al-Musnad al-Bayhaqi, and it, it was just as uh, Hassan, he alayhi salatu wa sallam said, al-jama'atu rahmah wal-furqa adab. يعني الجماعة الاجتماع to be united is a mercy from Allah عز وجل and splitting is punishment to be split and to be weak is punishment عذاب and from it also what Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said من أتاكم وأمركم جميع يريد أن يشق عصاكم فاقتلوا كائنا من كان when you are holding to one single man as your leader when the people rally against and they agree upon the leader, upon a leader. If there is another person who comes and declare himself as a leader, trying to split the people, then you should kill him, you should kill who seeks to undermine your solidarity or disrupt your unity. And this is obviously a, a severe threat. It couldn't be clearer, which is a warning against actually splitting and uh, dividing uh, in the deen. And from many, many other uh, evidences from the, Quran, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon this great principle, like I said, which is ittiba' al-Sunnah and al-Jama'ah. So this is actually, this is an asal, this is a principle that is evidenced by so many evidences and proofs that are mutawatir. These, yani, these evidences that point to it are mutawatir and are so apparent in the Sharia that like I said, the, you know, it has become, they have become, no, be, became known as Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And, you know, uh, separation and disputation and splitting uh, is actually only a disputation from the way of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. When you actually split and you separate from this Sunnah and Jama'ah, in reality, you are, or the person who is doing that, is separating and dividing from the way of Allah Azza wa Jal because the Sunnah wal Jama'ah is nothing but the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what he wants us to follow, right? This is what he wants us to follow. Sabil al Mu'minin, and he, he mentioned it in the ayah. وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Whoever follows other than the way of Sabil al Mu'minin. So anybody who separates and divide and dispute and diverge from this way, he is in reality, this is a uh, uh, deviation from the way of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and following other than Sabil al Mu'minin that Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us to, to follow. So, this is what Al Imam Abu Ja'far mentioned in this, in this statement. Now, obviously, they're related to this is many things. So, we want to take each word of them and kind of comment on it very quickly, inshallah. The first thing is, he said, let me use a different color so that it is clearer. He said, وَنَتَّبِعْ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ What is the ittiba'? We say نَتَّبِعْ. What is the ittiba'? The ittiba' is to actually follow in the footsteps based on the evidence. This is the ittiba'. You say, أَنَا أَتَّبِعْ Meaning, I follow based on the evidence that I know. Ittiba' al-haq is to actually follow in the footsteps of al-haq based on the evidence that the evidence points to. This is al-ittiba'. This evidence could be either an evidence of saying or it could be evidence of practice or actions. And hence the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is an evidence, it could be either his sayings alayhi salatu wasalam or his action and, and practice. Each one of them is a dalil, is a proof or evidence. And that is why Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah became known as those who follow this Sunnah, which is this athar or this evidence from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they have an evidence and proof to it. What is the opposite of al-ittiba'? Taqlid. So you have al-ittiba' and al-taqlid. What is the taqlid? 
Taqlid is to follow without knowing the evidence. You just blindly follow something, some, someone or something. You follow an opinion, you follow a saying, you follow something without knowing the evidence. This is taqlid. Because you don't know that. If you know the evidence, then you become muttabi'. So this is al-ittiba' now. We have al-ittiba' and we have al-taqlid. What we're supposed to do is nattabi' as much as we can. Specifically in the principles of, of the deen. We're talking about al-aqidah. A question that comes up. Is it allowed to, go, to make taqlid in the aqidah or do we have to be muttabi'? Can we do taqlid? Or are we supposed to be muttabi'een in the aqidah? We say there is more, it's not that simple. There is more to it. Al-aqidah, and we've been talking about this for a while. Al-aqidah from it is what is essential to the deen to become valid. So there are matters that are essential every Muslim cannot afford to be ignorant about. Every Muslim individually they must know and believe in. And there are more than that. So we say that those that are conditions to the validity of the deen of Islam, of one's is Islam, they have to be muttabi'een. They cannot make taqlid in those. So anything that without knowing which then the Islam is invalid, or one's Islam is invalid, or one's Iman is invalid, they have to be muttabi'een, they have to know the evidence, they cannot do just taqlid. And this is based on, Rasul, on Allah Azza wa Jal saying, فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ So know, meaning Ya Muhammad وسلم, that there is no true deity worthy of worship except Allah, and ask forgiveness for, for your sins. This Fa'lam, this is wujuban. This is wajib. Yani it is in order. It is in the imperative mode. It's an order. No, ya Muhammad. So it is a must upon every Muslim to actually know that which they cannot afford to be ignorant about. Al wajib is to actually follow with the evidence. So anything that is from the principles of Al Islam or anything that is from the principles of Al Iman. Knowing the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Knowing what you cannot afford to be ignorant about from the matters of your salah, of your zakah, of your siyam, of your hajj and umrah that is mandatory once in a lifespan. That is a must. You must know with the evidence. Knowing, or, uh, knowing the, uh, the, 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 that you must believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, in his angels, in his books, in, his, in the last day in the messengers, and in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, that is a must. You cannot be a muqallid in these matters. And if you remember, I hope you do, when we talked about the pillars of al-Iman, we did talk about the minimum level that is a must for every person to know, and then we talked about the above and beyond, which is obviously mustahab, but it is not required of every Muslim to be a Muslim. Remember that? Under each one of those pillars, al-Iman billah, we, sh we mentioned what is Enough. What is the absolute minimum? Al-Qadr al What is mujzi to know in that? Right? And under Al-Iman bil Malaika, etc., etc. So in these matters, you have to know the evidence. You have to be a muttabi'. Now, let's say, for example, you learn this dalil or this evidence, and then you forgot it later on in your life. Is it a must that you always should be mindful and remembering the evidence? The vast majority of the scholars is that it is not necessary. Uh, 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 as long as you've heard it and understood it at least once in your lifespan, then you're good to go. Even if you forgot it afterward. And this is, Ya Ibad Allah should show you the importance of these particular majalis. This is what we're doing in here. We're learning the aqidah with the evidence, with the proofs that point to them. And I hope that you... Uh, you've, 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 sit, you've sat down in the vast majority of these majalis and you learn that and this should be a proof for you on the day of resurrection. You've learned it. So your Islam is now based on a strong footing, on a foundation, strong and sound foundation. The second thing that is related to this statement is, he said, Sunnah. 
What is the sunnah? A lot of people understand the sunnah as the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is his practice, you know, his ibadah, his, uh, the way he, uh, uh, you know, his amal, his action and practice is. But it is actually more than that. A sunnah, if you want a formal description or definition of it, it is all the knowledge that we inherited from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A sunnah is all this ilm that is mawruth, وَرِثْنَاهُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ All the knowledge that we inherited from Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, be it in the matters of aqeedah, be it in the matters of tawheed, be it in the matter of al-amal, ibadat and, 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 and mu'amalat, etc., etc., and in the matters of the unseen, this is all sunnah. And this is what we're doing in here. This understanding that we're explaining and giving out is based on this knowledge that is we inherited from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So everything that his sayings and his guidance point to, right, is actually the sunnah that we learned from him alayhi salatu wa sallam. We should actually follow it and leave that which contradicts it or fly in its, in its face. Because the matters of al-aqidah and al-tawheed and the unseen, there is no room for having differences of opinions. If there is some room, and I, there is some room, in some of the matters of al-fiqh that we know today, right? So there are sometimes a hadith where, you know, it is not easy to say, is this, what is it, or is it not that? And that's why the scholars and the a'imma may end up with some differences of opinions. For example, with the matters of salah, siyam, etc. But in the matters of tawheed, there's absolutely no room for that. The matters of the tawheed and the aqidah and the unseen are crystal clear. There's no room for being, for having differences of opinions or different understanding. Or, for example, you know, for the ra'i or opinion, there's no room for that. It is crystal clear, and this is from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. He made it so crystal clear in that. And there is consensus among the ummah. We mentioned it before, that in these matters, there is no difference whatsoever in the matters of aqidah. What points to that this is part of the sunnah is, it has been the tradition of so many of the scholars that they used to write and pen down books of aqidah, and they would call it kitab al-sunnah. Subhanallah. The son of Imam Ahmad, Abdullah ibn Imam Ahmad, he wrote a book in the Aqeedah, he, call, he called it Kitab al-Sunnah, uh, written by Abdullah ibn Imam Ahmad. There is Kitab al-Sunnah lil-Khallal, lil-Imam al-Khallal. There is Kitab al-Sunnah li ibn Abi Asim, rahimahum Allah ta'ala. Sunnah lil-Tabarani, lil-Imam al-Tabarani. All of these are book of Aqeedah. They are called Kitab al-Sunnah. Because this is also from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, a sunnah in here, what the Imam Abu Ja'far, to summarize, what the Imam Abu Ja'far is referring to by using a sunnah, wa nattabi' sunnah, meaning the sunnah that is the evidence on these matters of aqidah, which is the way of sabil al-mu'minin. Taib. And we do not obviously put our intellect into it, whether what our mind accepts or does not accept. We don't actually put it the judge. If our mind does not accept something, we don't reject it because this is the sunnah that has been inherited, that we inherited from Rasulullah And it is unseen. We've never seen it before. So how can we put our mind and make use of our intellect, whether it accepts it or not? It is, our intellect can, cannot un comprehend that. We've never seen it, and hence it is al-ghayb, unseen. And we believe in the unseen. The second matter, he said, wal-jama'ah. What is al-jama'ah? Al-jama'ah, there are two types of al-jama'ah. So al-jama'ah is not one type. There are two types of al-jama'ah. There is jama'at al-deen and jama'at al-abdan of the bodies, literally. Jama'at al-abdan, the jama'ah of the bodies or of the people. Jama'at al-deen, or sometimes used as al-jama'ah in general. This is which the jama'ah, which is the understanding of the matters of the religion that the sahaba and the tabi'een and tabi' al tabi'een have agreed upon. Yani their understanding of the deen, usul al-deen, and of the unseen, and of the aqidah, and the matters of tawheed, their understanding that they have agreed upon this is the jama'ah, the first type of al-jama'ah. Jama'at, hence it is called jama'at al-deen. 
sometimes called jama'at al-ilm, knowledge, because it is the understanding of this deen. So it is either jama'at al-deen or jama'at al-ilm, which is that this deen is one and the understanding is one. And if you remember, I hope you do, that we made before, I can't remember under which statement, but several statements before, we made the distinction between the deen and the sharia. Ah. Anybody remembers that? Remember when Rasulullah sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith, he said, Al-anbiya'u ikhwatun li'allat, ad-deenu wahid, wa shara'i'u shatta. That the messengers and the prophets are like siblings to one father, but many mothers. Meaning, one father, it is one deen. Brothers, it is all one deen. There's no multiple deens, if you wish, for the lack of a better, or religions. It is one deen. There is no adyan. Islam. It is only one deen. This is the deen of Adam, and this is the deen of Nuh, alayhi salam, and Ibrahim, and uh, 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 Yusuf alayhi salam and Musa and Isa and Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The deen is one. Shara'i' differs from one messenger to another. Hence, Shari'at Musa is different than Shari'at Isa is different than Shari'at Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. But the deen, the origin, the, the principle of the deen, Tawheed and the unseen, it is the same thing and they preach the same, the same thing. So this ijtima' on the deen, on the one deen, this is the first type of jama'ah, jama'at al-deen. The second one is jama'at al-abdan, which is the jama'ah upon that they, get, they actually gather together into one ummah. Hence, it is jama'at al-abdan, which is the bodies or the souls. Yani all the Muslims are to actually unite into, into the, the same jama'ah, into the same group, as if it is one person or one, one body, and not to split and fight among one another in any type of splitting or any type of division, including this ijtima' around the Muslim leader that he talked just before that. Jama'at al-abdan around the Muslim leader. So this is the second type of, of jama'ah. The matters of al-a'tiqad, they actually make use of both types of al-jama'ah. Jama'at al-deen, which is the understanding that we've been covering, right? This is the understanding of the first jama'ah and the following tabi'een and tabi'at tabi'een. This is jama'at al-deen. And jama'at al-abdan, Imam Abu Ja'far shown it or has shown it when he talked about the impermissibility of rebelling against the Muslim leader. Hence, jama'at al-abdan of the bodies. Yani the ummah is one body. Al-ijtima'. So we see that both of them are referred to in, the, in this text of, of Aqeedah. وَنَتَّبِعِ السُنَّةَ وَالْجَمَاعَةَ Then he said, وَنَجْتَنِبْ وَنَجْتَنِبْ الشُّذُوذَ وَالْخِلَافَ وَالْفُرْقَةَ Najtanib from al ijtinab What is Al-Ijtinaab? The opposite of Al-Ittiba'. Ijtinaab to actually refrain, stay away from. Ijtanaba, yani he avoided and stay away from. Religiously. Religiously. Yani we stay away as a way of religion and as a way of drawing closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. We stay away from the separation and disputation and splitting. Religiously we avoid it. Then he said, shuduth, the first one that we stay away from and avoid is a shuduth. What is this shuduth from shadda? Shuduth is to actually have to come up with your own understanding that is unique, that is separate from all the ummah. You say sometimes this is a ra'i shadh, an opinion that is shadh. He's the only one who holds that opinion. He's unique in that understanding. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith which is related by Imam al-Tirmidhi from hadith Ibn Umar radiyallahu an. He said, Man shadda, shadda finnar. Whoever deviates, he deviates in the fire. Yani whoever comes up with his own understanding separate from or different from the understanding of al-jama'ah, jama'at al-deen, then he will actually be alone in the hellfire also. He will actually separate from them like he separated from them from the jama'ah, in their understanding of the deen, he will separate from them on the day of resurrection and will be in hellfire, wal billah. And the jama'ah will be where? In paradise. 
right? So he said, Man shadda, shadda fin nar. So whoever separates from al jamaa in their understanding, then his resurrection or his recompense will be billah in, in hellfire. So whoever comes up with an understanding in these matters of aqidah, in these matters of knowledge, that, separ- that is different than the understanding of al jamaa that the evidence does not point to it and does not, uh, is not uh, following the understanding of the first jama'ah, then that person is obviously a deviant and he is deviation and separating from jama'at, jama'at al-din. That is why a lot of the scholars, including Imam Ahmad and many, many others, a'imma of our righteous predecessors, they used to say in the matters of aqidah, لا نتجاوز القرآن والسنة or al-hadith, I'm sorry. لا نتجاوز القرآن والحديث We do not go beyond the Qur'an and the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. We stop at it. Whatever the evidence point to, we stop at it with the understanding of the first jama'ah. We don't go beyond that. Why? If you go beyond that, then you will have no evidence to what you come up with. You're going beyond them. You haven't been conv- this knowledge hasn't been conveyed to you. So you make this opinion based on what? No evidence. If you go uh, uh, beyond them. That is why they used to say, Quran sunnah In the matters of aqidah and in the matters of, of uh, the unseen. Then he said, Wal-khilaf. We do not. Wal-khilaf. Separation and disputation. Disputation. Khilaf is disputation. Yani to have dispute. Nakhtalif. Ikhtilaf. We also avoid that religiously. He said, Al-Khilaf is obviously is all evil. And it is dispraised in the Sharia in general. Al-Khilaf. And Al-Khilaf or Al-Ikhtilaf, to have to split and divide, is something that is evil and dispraised in the Sharia. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Surah Hud. But they will not cease to disagree, disagreement and disputation. But they will not cease to disagree except him on whom your Lord has bestowed his mercy. And for that did he create them. Yani he, cre- he created them to unite, not to disagree and split. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said he created the human kind to actually agree, right? To agree and cease from disagreeing. And this is from the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the Imam Ibn Mas'ud, or, or Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu arda, he said, Al-Khilafu Sharr. Disagreeing and disputing is an evil. And what is praised and what is good is to actually agree and nashtami' ma' jama'at al deen To be upon what they used to be upon. To be upon what they used to be upon. And this is al-khayr. And to actually stick to the Jama'at Deen and Jama'at Al Abdan. The last one, Al Furqa, Liftiraq, and splitting. We kind of hinted at that before. Al Furqa is splitting. And Al Iftiraq, or Al Furqa, uh, uh, has been mentioned so many times in the text, in the Quran, and in the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, and there is a Nahi from it. A Nahi from splitting, and a Nahi from Al Iftiraq. And we mentioned several of the ayat just to refresh your memory very quickly. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا الفرقة. Do not split and do not divide. Uh, this ayah obviously indicates and is very clear about nahi from dividing and from al-furqa. And it actually encourages to actually unite. Also from what Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And remember Allah's favor on you for you were enemies one to another but he joined your hearts together. Huh? اجتماع, جماعة. This is جماعة what? Which type of جماعة? جماعة الدين. Because people before the time of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم were what? Were split in their religions. Each one they came up with their own sect. Allah Azza wa Jal sent this deen and united them in the deen, jama'at al-deen, and they united upon the deen of Islam. So this is jama'at al-deen. 
uh, and remember for Allah's favor on you, for you were enemies one to another, but He joined your hearts together, together so that by His grace you became brethren, yani brothers in the deen, in Islam, and you were on the brink of a pit of fire, and He saved you from it. And this is also al iftiraq fi deen al-furqa in the deen. Another ayah, Surah al-Shura, He said, شَرَعَ لَكُم مِّنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّ بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَ وَعِيسَى أَنْ أَقِيمُ الدِّينِ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ and he ordained upon you the same religion and mentioned several of the prophets alayhim salatu wasalam. Then he said saying you should establish the religion and make no divisions in it. Which type of jama'ah is this? I think it's very crystal clear. Jama'at. Let me refresh them. An aqimu din wala tatafarraqu fi. Do not split in it, in the religion. So hence jama'at, a din. Very easy inshallah. So, I'm, I know I'm running out of time, inshallah. So, what I want to actually summarize and here say, like we mentioned before, that there are two types of jama'a. There is jama'at al-deen, jama'a upon the deen, and there is jama'at al-abdan. Likewise, the opposite is likewise of two types. There is al-iftiraq, splitting and dividing in the deen, for iftiraq al-deen, and iftiraq al-abdan, to split in the in the, in the bodies, yani to split the ummah, to actually divide the ummah, whether by infighting or by rebelling against the Muslim leader. When you do that, you're splitting the ummah. Yani you are splitting al-abdan, the bodies, which is against jama'at al-abdan, right? And jama'at, when you come up with your own understanding of the deen and you split from the understanding of the sabil al mu'minin or the first jama'ah, then you are splitting in the deen and this is against what we are ordered of actually al-ishtima'ah. Ishtima'ah upon the deen and ishtima'ah upon, upon the bodies to actually unite in the, as an ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are upon the same understanding of the sahaba, of the first jama'ah until we die because this is the safe way. The safe way and the way of salvation is to actually follow Sabil al Mu'minin, which is the Sabil of the first Jama'ah and their understanding, and to also act and work toward uniting the Ummah as, a, as an individual to unite the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on that. Innahu wa liyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. And I do apologize. We don't have. Oh, 845. Ya akhi, somebody should have told me, man. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Tayyip. All right, alhamdulillah. Tayyip. Somebody should have uh, just given me a hint. No, no, you're fine. You still have time. Bismillah. In that case, we'll continue, inshallah. I still got time. Tayyip. So, so there is jama'at al-deen and jama'at al-abdan. And likewise, there is furqat al-deen and furqat al-abdan, which are, we are to avoid. There is nahi from both types of al-iftiraq. And al-iftiraq in, in the deen, or al-furqa in the deen, is the very opposite of al-ijtima' ala al-deen. What we said, al-ijtima' ala al-deen is to actually have the same understanding, right? To follow sabil al-mu'mineen. Al-furqa fi al-deen is to actually come up with your own understanding, following the, following the desires and the people of desires. And this is exactly, for example, let's take al-khawarij. Al-khawarij, this is exactly how they deviated. Why did they deviate? Because they came up with their own understanding of the ayat that allow splitting the blood. This is the origin. This is the origin and the source of their deviation. The source of the deviation of the al-khawarij, and like I said, the remnants will still suffer from them. Why? Why did they deviate? They deviated because they selected these ayat from the Qur'an, and they put their own understanding, which is different than the understanding of a Sahaba. These are ayat that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the kuffar and the mushrikeen, and they started to apply them on the believers. And they started to kill. Subhanallah. So this is the source of their deviation. And, <clears throat> and their fitna, obviously, is one of the greatest fitna. And obviously afterward, those sects who deviated in the matters of Aqeedah, Jahmiya, Al Mu'tazila, uh, you know, etc., etc., that we mentioned some of their names, Al Hululiya, which is these are extreme Sufis who actually went so extreme, so extreme, that they believed that Allah Azza wa Jal has came down into everything. 
And some of them would say, I am not but Allah and Allah nothing but me. وَالْعِيَاتُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ اللَّهِ Exalted is our Lord from this. They went so extreme and they called them الْحُلُورِيَ which means that Allah Azza wa Jal حَلْ يعني He came down into everything. He became everything. تَعَالَ اللَّهِ All of this is what is deviation from this ishtima' upon the deen. Ishtima' upon the understanding and the way of, of the believers. سَبِيلْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ طيب. And this is بالله, the greatest actually iftiraq in the deen to actually deviate in the, in the, in the, in the principles of the deen, usul al-deen, which are, like I said, are actually very clear, crystal clear. There's no actually room for any opinions. The matters of aqidah, what we should believe in, and the matters of the unseen are crystal clear. Allah Azza wa Jal made them so crystal clear for us that there is no room for misunderstanding or having a shubha or whatnot or room for different understanding, it is not possible in the matters of aqidah and in the matters of tawheed and in the matters of, of the unseen. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي Or I'm sorry, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And verily, this is my straight path and so follow it and follow not that different path for uh, they will separate you they will separate you away from his path this has this he has ordained for you that you may become muttaqin so this is the way of uh, of the first jama'ah sabil sabil al mu'minin and all the different types of al-iftiraq obviously the al-iftiraq is many types as we mentioned all of them are based on, you know, people starting to follow their desires and the people of desires. Once they do that, then they will actually deviate from the understanding of, of the first jama'ah. And that's why they are referred to by Ahl al-Ahwa, people of desires. People of desires, why? Because they follow their desires and they follow their own, own understanding. Why? Because this is what satisfies their desires. They change the understanding to, be fit, to fit and be fit there their own understanding. Type. A question, we're almost done. A question. Some people may ask, could it be, could it be that these people were or deviated, these people deviated because that there are in the Quran some ayat that are muhkamat and some ayat that are mutashabihat. Remember, we did, the, we did have this discussion when we talked about the Qur'an. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned it crystal clear in the ayah of Surah Ali Imran. طيب. We said that there are ayat that are muhkamat. Hunna ummul kitab. And there are ukhar mutashabihat. So there are ayat that are muhkamat and there are ayat mutashabihat. And we did explain the meaning of that. Could it be that because Allah Azza wa Jal made some ayat that are mutashabihat, that may not be so clear to everybody, that they can be explained in multiple ways. Is this the, the reason why they went deviated, uh, 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 deviant, and they became deviated? What say you? Is that the reason? Possible. possible? No, it's not possible. That's not the reason why they went deviated. Here's why. The reason if you actually, and I am actually chose to show you the ayah. This is the ayah of Surah Ali Imran. Allah Azza wa Jal would never reveal something or would not actually put in the Quran something that would be the reason for the deviation of people. They were deviant in the first place. Let us come ponder upon this ayah and look at what Allah Azza wa Jal says. Right? These people of desires, did they go deviant after they looked at these ayat that are mutashabihat? No. They were deviant in the first place. There was zayg in their hearts before, and they only looked at these ayat that are mutashabihat to prove their deviance. They didn't go deviant because of these ayat that are mutashabihat. Allah Azza wa Jal says, He told us that, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ So we have the first type. آيَات مُحْكَمَات آيَات مُحْكَمَات هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتِ And there are others ayat that are mutashabihat. Let us look at the people of misguidance. 
فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغِ Those who have deviant, or those who have deviation in their hearts. Why did they go deviant? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغِ They had misguidance and they had deviation in, the, in their heart in the first place. فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ See this fa in here that I made it in, 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 in uh, red. فيتبعون. الفاء in the Arabic language comes in different meaning. One of them is ordering. You say, for example, دخل يوسف فمحمد يعني إلى المسجد. يعني Yusuf entered the masjid first and then he was followed by Muhammad. In here you can tell an order. If you say دخل محمد ويوسف Muhammad and Yusuf entered the masjid, you couldn't tell who entered. Uh, uh, they could have entered exactly together or one shortly after the other, but you couldn't tell who entered first. Al wow does not indicate an order. But if you say fa dakhala Yusuf fa Muhammad, it means that Yusuf entered first and then Muhammad. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Those deviant people, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زيغ, They had زَيْغْ in their hearts in the, in the first place. They were people of desires. They were people of deviation. And they only looked at these ayat that are mutashabihat to prove their misguidance only. That's it. They weren't misguided by these ayat. They only looked afterward. They had deviancy in their heart in the first place. They were deviant, and they looked into the mutashabihat to prove it. They, they uh, uh, cherry-pick cherry these ayat that are mutashabihat to prove their desires and their understanding. And the way of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, again, the way of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, sabil al mu'minin. How, what is Sabil al Mu'minin with respect to the ayat al mutashabihat? All of it from Allah, they believe in it, but how do they explain it? What is their way in explaining and understanding them? Because they could potentially have multiple, under, multiple meaning. They could be understood with multiple meaning. How do they know what is the correct meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal wanted? Not only that, what they do is they actually understand them in light of al-muhkamat. They don't take them alone, separate. They don't take them separate. There is an ayah that is mutashabih, that I couldn't tell, I'm not 100% sure, is, is this the meaning or that is the, or that is the meaning. From the words, it could be both. It could be this meaning or that meaning. But which one did Allah Azza wa Jal want? To be able to tell and to know, you understand it in light of al-muhkamat. When you actually compare it with al-muhkamat, then they, the al-muhkamat will tell you exactly what the meaning is. Let's take a quick example in a minute or two. The ayah of Surah Al-Nisa, right? Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا أحسن بارك الله فيك لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا طيب, الآيه says, and if the, when they erred and wronged themselves, they came to you, Ya Rasulullah, and they made istighfar, they asked Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness, and the Prophet made istighfar for them, they would find Allah accepting of the tawbah, accepting of the repentance, and forgiving. Some people will say, aha, this is, an, this is a pr evidence that we can go now to the qabr of Rasulullah and ask, for, ask him to, to uh, ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us. This is mutashabih. Tayyip. We say there are tons of ayat in the Quran that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and the one who passes away cannot hear you. Except where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an exception. So we know for example when you make salah and salam upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam he told us this is from the unseen. Can anybody see that? Can anybody see that? We cannot see that. So we have no way of telling what is possible and what is not. But Rasulullah told us that 
this is from the unseen that the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal will convey your salah and salam upon him to him and he will reply. This is an exception. And this ayah should be understood in light of of al-muhkamat, let alone that the language itself does not support that because Allah Azza wa Jal, and the ayah is very precise, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا He didn't say, إِذَا ظَلَمُوا And the difference between, in the Arabic language, I don't want to go into the grammar too much, but the difference between إِذْ and إِذَا, which is written differently, this is إِذْ. إِذْ. And إِذَا is like that. So there is an extra alif. This is if, this is what's in the ayah. If, it, it means in the past. Does not mean the future. Iza, it means the future. Because both of them refer to timing. Both of them are dharf zaman. They are words that mean timing. If, in the, in the past. And this is why the consensus of all the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and you can consult all the tafsir that this is before he passed away, alayhi salatu was salam. After he passed away, alayhi salatu was salam, that you cannot go to him and ask him. So when you actually understand it in light of al muhkamat, then it becomes crystal clear. So they actually deviated because they followed their desires, and this is not because of al mutashabihat they looked at the mutashabe only to find an evidence for their deviancy or deviation. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on the understanding of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, al Jama'ah al Ula, and upon the Sabil al Mu'mineen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us like that, steadfast, and stay the course until we meet Him and make our ending a happy one. Inna huwa liyudhalika wal qadiru alayhi wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وإياكم